Severe injuries of the elbow are usually fairly easy to pick up. This presentation is going to focus on the more subtle x-ray findings so that we don't miss the more subtle injuries that present to an emergency department. This first film is an AP film showing a lucency through the distal humerus indicating a fracture. The second view that we obtain, of course, is a lateral, and that dashed line forming a figure of eight in the distal humerus is the so-called hourglass sign. This tells us that the lateral film is a true lateral, and it's the first step in assessing the elbow. If you don't see that hourglass sign, if you don't see that figure of eight, then you need to get a repeat lateral film. Otherwise, you can't properly assess the alignment of the bones that make up the elbow. Here's a film of an elbow that doesn't look quite right. There's a bit of bunching around the distal humerus there. With a little bit of repositioning, we can see the figure of eight, and we know that it's a true lateral, and can go on and reassess it appropriately. The arrows in this film show a hypodensity. That hypodensity, just anterior to the distal humerus, is usually adipose tissue, in what is called the anterior fat pad sign. In a lot of cases that can be normal. If it's particularly large, as in this case, and looks a little bit like a sail, that's abnormal. And the hypodensity isn't due to adipose tissue, but due to fluid that's come from the joint, for example, blood from an intraarticular fracture. So assessing the anterior fat pad sign and looking for a sail sign is the next step in our approach. We also look for a posterior fat pad sign. And we can see one here indicated by the red arrow. These, unlike the anterior fat pad, are almost always abnormal in at least 75% of cases. If you see a posterior fat pad in a sore elbow, think fracture. Now we can see a fracture of the distal humerus in this x-ray. We also know that this is an angulated fracture, and we know this because if we trace a line down the anterior aspect of that distal humerus, you can see that it goes through the anterior aspect of the capitellum, and that's abnormal. This is what it should look like. The anterior humeral line should go through the middle third of the capitellum. And this is the next thing that we look for because it may be the only sign that a fracture is present. To illustrate that further, we've got a pictorial here with the green line going through the middle third of the capitellum. This is a fairly obvious elbow dislocation. We can see the ulna isn't articulating with the trochlea. We can see that the radial head isn't articulating with the capitellum. It does introduce us to the next sign, which is the radiocapitella line. And that's a line drawn from the distal radius through the capitellum. And in both the lateral and the AP films, it should bisect that capitellum. So, so far, we've made sure that our elbow has a true lateral by looking for the hourglass or figure of eight sign. We've looked for two fat pads, the anterior and posterior fat pads of the distal humerus. And we've looked for two lines, the anterior humeral line and the radial capitella line. There's only three more things to look for. The next one is quite subtle. We can see that the radial head, indicated by the dashed red circle here, is tilted slightly superiorly. If there is an abnormal angle of the radial head, you need to think that it might be fractured. Now, this red arrow is pointing out a fairly obvious fracture of the distal humerus. Just like any orthopedic injury, we need to look for disruption of the cortex as seen here. In some cases, it's subtle. So the coronoid process of the ulna bone in this lateral film is fractured. Finally, we need to account for all the small bony fragments seen in an elbow x-ray. In young kids, ossification centres form in the cartilaginous elbow over the age of 0 to 12 years. These are the different ossification centres. There are seven of them. And they form in order. Capitellum, radial head, internal or medial epicondyle, the trochlea, the olecranon, and then the external lateral epicondyle. These appear at the ages of 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, respectively. And this can be remembered by the mnemonic crito, 
So looking back at our x-ray, we can see the radial head forming here, and we can see the capitellum. That's our C and our R. If we look for the internal epicondyle, it's not where it should be next to that medial aspect of the humerus. In fact, there's a bony fragment a little bit further out and surrounded by soft tissue swelling. This is an avulsion fracture, and it's an avulsion fracture of the internal epicondyle, the most common avulsion fracture of the elbow. So just going through that in a bit more detail, here we have the capitellum, which comes around the age of one or two, followed by the radial head, followed by the internal epicondyle, followed by the trochlea and the olecranon, and by the age of 12, we've got the external epicondyle as well. Now, the ages of ossification centres shouldn't be confused with the years at which these ossification centres fuse with the rest of the elbow bones. That tends to occur at different times between the ages of 12 and 18. And that has an, its own order of fusion and can be remembered by a different mnemonic, C-T-E-R-O-I. It's not something we really need to keep in mind when assessing the elbow itself. So in summary, we're making sure we've got a true lateral by looking for an hourglass or figure of eight sign. We're checking for our two fat pads. And if we see fat pad signs present, we should be suspicious of a fracture, particularly if it's a posterior fat pad, anterior humeral and radiocapitellar lines to make sure the elbow bones are properly aligned. We look at the angle of the radial head. We look for any disruptions of the cortex of the bones, and we make sure we can account for all the bony fragments and that they're appearing in the right order.